Hi there guys and a very warm welcome to the channel and on board Speedbird 15. Uh, in front of you we've got the Boeing 777-300 aircraft in the British Airways livery and I'll be the captain today taking this from London Heathrow down to Singapore and then on to Sydney. Now before I take the aircraft and start the, my uh, checks and uh, prepare the aircraft for departure I wanted to show you my prepared 3D settings. Uh, some of you know me as a Twitch streamer and I get frequently asked how I've got my settings for prepared, what I've done with Nvidia Inspector and do I have anything else running to make my sim look as good as I think it does. Uh, so before we get into the flight deck and take this baby away, let's show you the settings for Prepare 3D. Right, okay, so we've got the graphics tab up here for the display section, and I'll only be running through, really, to be honest, these first three. Uh, none of the rest are important, the rest are really your personal preference. And so these first few settings, to be honest, uh, it all depends on your, um, your system setup, the specs that you have, and even if you've got very similar settings, uh, the sim behaves differently to everybody's different components. Uh, so first of all, and without further ado, I've got my display adapter as the GTX 960. It's a 2 gigabyte VRAM model. Uh, it's not the best graphics card out there, but it does the job for prepared and I get very good uh, performance out of it. Uh, I'm running the sim at a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and I've got FXAA running off and MSAA running at 8 samples and the texture filtering set at anisotropic 16 times. Now for those of you who are familiar with the sim you know that you can run this at 2, 4, 8 samples and the same with the texture filtering as well. There's Trilinear 2, 4, 8 and 16 for the anisotropic options. Now I've played with this quite a bit and I've tried 2 times, 4 times eight times and a different um, kind of combination between the MSAAs as well and I found the eight times uh, sorry the eight samples and the anisotropic 16 times works best and I don't seem to have any trouble with uh, sort of out of memory issues and I think I've got the sim running at a really good um, state so I'm going to leave it how it is until uh, the foreseeable future now when it comes to texture resolution then I'm running at 40 uh, 96 by 1496 and again I said like I said just a few moments ago I'm not having any trouble with uh, vast issues at the moment I tend to get uh, maximum up to about 80% at the end of really long haul flights uh, running high um, settings or high-ish settings with complex airports so I'm very happy with how my sim is running at the moment uh, with the frame rate controls then I've got vsync turned off I have no use for that when I turn it on it really doesn't affect my sim at all uh, triple buffering I've got to uh, untick and when it comes to the target frame I've got it set to unlimited and that's where uh, Nvidia Inspector comes into play where I actually externally limit my frame rate and I actually limit it to 30 as I find that's where I find the best balance between performance and you know the sim looking really good. Uh, moving on to the hardware tessellation um, section then I've got tessellation enabled and I've got that ticked here and what that basically does is it moves a little bit um, of the uh, load on the CPU to the GPU so in my case the uh, GTX 960 uh, this is something that FSX never had uh, and prepared does a little bit differently and like I said it just enables your CPU to kind of rest a little bit more and tells the GPU you know what you actually have a go at doing something uh, whereas FSX was primarily just your uh, processor um, but uh, yeah prepared has done well I think and hopefully with further updates to come it'll make more use of the GPU until we get a brand new simulator one day hopefully so when it comes to the view and panel settings then I've got the wide view aspect ratio ticked and the mipmap uh, VC panels ticked as well. Now with myself wide view aspect ratio goes on and off depending on what aircraft I'm flying So for example in the Aerosoft Airbus I have it unticked whereas I'm in the PNDG 777 right now I'll have it ticked and that's just because of my easy dock uh, I have to have the two different settings to cater for easy dock otherwise it doesn't work for me uh, But that's the kind of thing I've had to do to make easy dock work uh, So moving on to the scenery tab then this will be I guess for most of you the most interesting tab uh, You can see my settings really aren't that high um, for what my sim looks like, I think I've got uh, the, you know, the sliders bang on uh, without having to deal with you know extreme lag at times unless I'm in places like Toronto, for example, where my sim just struggles. Uh, but level of radius then. Uh, detail radius sorry set to ultra tessellation factor set to high mesh resolution is set to two meters texture resolution is set to 15 centimeters and land detail textures are ticked again like i said i've basically pretty much run at the ftx global uh, minimum settings uh, maybe if we the settings have been ramped up a little bit but i'm nowhere near running at a kind of full blast um, but I've still got the sim running really, really nicely. I'm sure some of you guys can vouch for that from my uh, Twitch as well. Uh, so moving on to water around bathymetry, if that's how you say it. I've got the water detail set to medium. Bathymetry turned off 
and with the reflections tab here I've got clouds and user vehicles ticked. I've not got any of the other stuff ticked, so I don't really find much use for it and I only really concentrate on the clouds and the user vehicle anyway uh, when it comes to my outside views. Um, and the water details as well, one thing to note, I run uh, Rex4 Texture Direct which runs a lot of my textures for the water um, and all the reflections and the different kinds of colours colors of water that I get and I find that medium really does the job and I don't really need to have it any higher than it already is. Uh, so just to finish off the scenery tab then, we've got the scenery complexity set to very dense, autogen vegetation density set to very dense as well, and the building density set to normal. Now, one thing to note again about my autogen vegetation density, goodness me, this is like uh, killing my tongue, but um, very dense, I've got it set to very dense because I'm running FTX trees. FTX trees basically enables you to put in a lot more vegetation and it doesn't have as much of a hit on your frames as the stock P3D uh, would have had to have before. So for example, if I had stock P3D uh, vegetation, I probably would get this down to dense just because you know you might get a few stutters if you're in like going over doing a final approach over uh, Oslo, for example, which does have quite a few trees uh, going in and out of it. But I've got it managed to get it to very dense thanks to FTX trees. And if you have FTX trees maybe if you haven't got your settings for this ramped up a little bit more you might want to give it a go and see uh, how you fare so to finish off then uh, special effects um, I've got both of them set to medium here again I've not found really much use of this I don't know where you know p3d actually put stuff like this in uh, maybe for places like Las Vegas where you get bonfires at night uh, in the surrounding setting maybe that kind of thing but really I've not found much use of it so I've just set both to medium and I don't seem to be missing much anyway so I think I'm all good there on the scenery tab uh, so for the final tab really I've got the lighting and a lot of you were quite interested in my HDR settings as well so I've definitely got that ticked I can't live without that anymore um, um, so the brightness I've got set to 1.05, bloom to 1.0 and saturation uh, to 0 0.80 uh, and what this does is it gives uh, a really really nice effect uh, for when you're looking up when you're looking from you when you're looking down from the FMC to when you you know go back into the the pilot's view it just gives you a really really nice effect and I really can't live without it anymore uh, so I can't stress how important HDR is to my flight simming experience nowadays uh, so just to finish off then with the lighting tab before we move on to Nvidia and Spectre uh, dynamic reflections I've got set off I don't have any use for that for myself personally again you guys can play around with your settings uh, landing lights illuminates ground has to be on for me especially when you're doing final approaches after like a long haul flight you really want to see uh, the landing lights on the ground especially after like a 12 hour flight which I'm probably going to be doing now when I head down to Singapore um, where if it's night time in Singapore I want to be able to see my landing lights uh, lens flare I really never really liked to be honest with you so I've got that set off again that's all per personal preference uh, with the shadow quality I've got that set to high and that's quite important for me um, for when I've got the sun reflecting uh, over one side of my aircraft and the other side's quite dark, I want to be able to see the nice shadows and get crisp, um, sharp edged uh, shadows rather than jagged edges, which, you know, kind of spoils it for me. Um, as you can see, the rest of my settings here, I'm not going to really go through them, but you can see them anyway. Uh, that's how I've got my settings set in the sim. Uh, weather and traffic, well, weather is uh, done with Active Sky for me, and traffic, well, I'm on VATA most of the time, so that's all set with the AI model matching over there. And the rest is really your, just your personal preference on how you want your sim to work. Uh, let's just check how my flight is. Well, they're still all doing their. Um, boarding uh, I think it's just the catering at the moment just filling up the nice uh, first class food uh, for the nice first class people today for my flight and if we look at the Nvidia inspector now then uh, I've got the old Nvidia inspector excuse me I know there is an update but uh, yeah bear with me with that so if you have a look here at Nvidia inspector I've got it set to the prepare 3d profile uh, now the only few things that I've changed here to be honest are the frame rate is limited to 30 fps uh, again, you guys can play with this whether you want to do it to 35, 40, or if you just want to leave it as unlimited, you have to play around with it. I used to be able to run it at limited and just let the frames fluctuate, uh, but then I started to get um, stutters, micro stutters as well, and I found that when I used the frame rate limiter like Nvidia Inspector to externally limit the frames, uh, it actually made the sim a lot smoother, and I really get uh, micro stutters these days. Um, now, with anti aliasing, then I've got enhanced the application setting for the anti aliasing mode. Um, you know, there are a few other set um, settings settings here which you can play around with but uh, I highly recommend the enhancers application settings as a lot of uh, other people have as well. Uh, when it comes to the anti-aliasing transparency super sampling well I've got mine set, set to off slash uh, multi sampling a lot of people you know use the uh, four times sparse grid super, uh, super sampling for, for example uh, but I've decided to go against that because when I have had that uh, when it's raining for example with active sky my sim you know severely stutters 
uh, unfortunately and that's probably just a limitation with for example maybe my graphics card but we'll never know unless I change it uh, moving down then, so texture uh, filtering in the texture filtering tab, the quality is set to high quality. You can set this to high performance, for example, performance or quality, but I've uh, set it to high quality. Uh, power management mode, again, this is just my personal preference. I've got it set to prefer maximum performance. So basically, I like to max my system out. And that's pretty much it for the NVIDIA inspector. Again, there's not much I've changed there, but you guys can play around with this and have a look at the various different uh, things there are online and on YouTube to see which one and uh, would be best for your sim. And hopefully, one day, you'll get to a nice, steady uh, place where I am. Right then, guys. So the dispatch officer just had a word with me. Um, obviously, I need to hurry up here because I need to get this aircraft uh, off the ground in time for my departure slot. But really quickly before I head off, uh, the realism shader pack is the final thing I wanted to show you. Uh, what it is here, some information about it. You guys, if you get it yourselves, you can have a read through. But what it is, is it just does a little bit extra to the sim. It makes it look a little bit more dark and it adds just a little bit more uh, a bit of realism. And things look a bit darker where they should and not really, really bright as they stupidly do sometimes and prepared. Um, so first thing you want to do is obviously back everything up. Uh, if you don't like this realism shader pack, then at least you're able to restore and go back to normal. And of course, tell this tell this program where prepared is, first of all, otherwise you're not going to get any of the changes. Uh, so terrain and shadows, well I'll just skip through this and you can see what it does, uh, obviously it just makes things a little bit brighter, I've got mine set to quite high, well the highest option there and I just find that's the best option for me. Uh, with the shadow intensity I've got mine set to medium and again you can see the difference that these three options make. Uh, but I've got mine set to medium and again it's all pre personal preference for you and once you're happy then press install the next time you go into the sim it'll all be changed for you and hopefully you will notice the difference. Uh, with the auto gen then I've got the enable auto gen brightness tweak set. If you if I click this now you can probably just see the difference here if you look at these uh, little bits of auto gen uh, and it really does make a bit of a difference when you're coming into places that has you know hand placed buildings just before the the runway for example. Places like Manila especially I've found uh, look really really nice with this enabled so I've got that ticked and again once you're done press install uh, with the clouds and I've got the enabled cloud sh uh, shader ticked and it just gives a little bit more coverage with the clouds uh, above and it really does look nice especially if the weather's not looking great outside and you've got loads of clouds the final tab that I wanted to go through with you is the HDR tab now this is um, something that I haven't touched. I like my in-sim HDR setting so much, I've decided to not risk it and left these alone. I'm sure this probably changes your in, uh, your CFG um, when you press install, uh, and because I don't want to do that and risk changing my settings, I've left this off. But you can try this out for yourselves, maybe before changing your CFG or your in-sim settings, uh, you might want to you know try out step one and step two and see if you like those ones instead, and if not, maybe try my ones, or if you have one of your own. Uh, if you have one of your own as well, why not post them in the comments and maybe other people can try them out as well. Uh, that'll be pretty cool to see what you guys have your HDR set at as well. Then guys, so from me and Speedbird15, uh, I need to really get out of here and um, get this aircraft off the ground. I haven't even had a chance to look at the load sheet yet, so I really should get out of here. But uh, hopefully I'll see you in a stream one day, maybe say hello, drop a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions about my sim, uh, or maybe just visit me in the stream one day and I'll be able to answer your questions live. But until then guys, I'll see you in the virtual sky sometime soon. Take care and thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.